10 interior fails that make me mad. Car companies put a lot of effort into interiors these days, packing them full of technology, exotic materials, and clever features. But all too often, there are infuriating details which come close to ruining the whole cabin. Here are 10 examples of interior fails which get my blood boiling. Auto gearbox levers masquerading as manuals. Let's start this list off strongly with something I know really grinds your gears. Some manufacturers, Audi for instance, have got into the habit of making their automatic gearbox levers look a lot like manual shifters, with leather gaiters and a rounder gear knob at the top. But what's the point? Because honestly, you're fooling no one. Rubbish cup holders. A frequently mentioned interior gripe we all have is cup holders. They're often placed in stupid positions, like just in front or behind the gear lever, where you're at risk of spilling your drink every time you change gear. On other occasions, they're just too small to be of any real use, while anyone who's had a bottle or cup fly out of a gaping canyon of a cup holder will know true pain. Then there are the cars that don't even have cup holders. Take the E46 330Ci, for example. Not even one. No grab handles. There are some cars which could really do with grab handles, but don't have them installed. In quick cars like the Ford Fiesta ST and BMW M4, and all other 4 Series BMWs for that matter, your poor passengers will grab for the Jesus handle as it's also known, only to find nothing there. I mean, seriously? Fake carbon fibre trim. Once the preserve of the aisles in your local Halfords, fake bits of carbon fibre trim are now a staple of performance car interiors. The Skoda Octave Octavia VRS, for example, has this stuff dotted about the cabin, and it's a blight on what's otherwise a very nice interior. Seat recline handles. If your car doesn't have electric seats, it'll probably have a big dial on the side to change the position of the backrest. These work well, so it's puzzling why some manufacturers instead use a lever, which, without very careful use, can only result in you sitting bolt upright or lying completely flat. Ugly stuck on screens. Topping the list of offenders for ugly stuck on screens is BMW, closely followed by Mercedes, which fits something that looks like a stuck on tablet to many of its models. The same can be said about some Seat Ibiza models, plus many more cars I'm sure, and in most cases, you'd get a neater result by simply using a phone mount. Too many buttons. A good way to make an interior look awkward is to throw a load of nasty buttons at the dash. The previous generation Ford Focus was particularly bad for this, and the button-laden center console was one of my biggest gripes about the car when I drove one for a while. Fortunately, the facelifted Focus has a much cleaner design with far fewer buttons. Piano Black Plastic I'm yet to see a manufacturer use this sort of material without making it look cheap and nasty. Depending on how you spec it, the new Mercedes C-Class has the whole center console coated in the stuff, and it comes close to ruining the whole interior. Handbrake underneath the armrest. Having an armrest is a great thing, especially for longer motorway journeys. But when it gets in the way of the handbrake lever, the only thing you'll want to do with it is tear it off and set it on fire. Whoever thought this was acceptable at the time needs to be punished. The Pit of Doom. To anyone who's ever dropped stuff down the side of a car seat, I feel your pain. The Pit of Doom knows no mercy and will literally swallow anything within reach. That being the case, it seems crazy that no manufacturers come up with a decent solution to solve this catastrophic first world problem. So come on car makers of the world, please fix it. What other interior fails grind your gears? Let us know in the comments. If you're new to the channel or a little behind on details, then hello and welcome back. This is Phil, my MX-5, and last year, Phil's engine decided not to be an engine anymore. A few months ago, I bought a new motor, installed it with my best friend, and here we are one year later with an MX-5 Turbo that now runs like a champ. 